So, not a whole lot going on in this video. Uh, mainly, I keep getting a P0101, which is the mass airflow sensor circuit performance. I had already fixed a wiring repair, or wiring problem, and uh, test drove it good codes on the drive home, it's still fucked up. And then I got into work today and it's still messed up. So I started digging into it because it's got a new sensor. The wiring's all fixed, so I'm not getting the circuit code anymore. Uh, I was getting like a circuit low or something. And then um, um, this is the wiring I fixed yesterday. So far, I haven't seen any splits in my intercooler piping. So I still don't know why I'm getting the code. All right, so today's the day to put the turbo on. Uh, it's probably been, I'd say a little over a month since I messed with the MAF sensor and all that. Ended up putting a new one in, it was fine. Um, didn't find any other issues, so praying new turbo is gonna go fine I don't know in the car now I'm getting ready to leave for work so because that's where all my tools are and uh, I'll try and video it as well as possible I don't really have anything to hold the phone so it's gonna be kind of fun but uh, I'll try and get you know videos of everything so everybody can watch it but all right let's get going all right so we just got to work I'm gonna go ahead and let it cool down some because it's really hot right now. But I'm gonna, while it's hot, I'm gonna spray it down with some rust penetrant and stuff like that. All right, so here's my turbo from Snail Works. It's a 19T HL. It is a stock Mitsubishi turbo. It has a six by six blade on this side. And then if I wanna turn it over, it's got an 11 on this side, as you can see. I also have some uh, steel braided lines from Mamba. I can get them from Snail Works, but I already had these. So I figured I might as well use them instead of trashing them. Well, mainly I'm gonna take my intake off and then those bolts have to come out. There's three bolts that connect to the manifold and then, you know, intercooler. And it should be good to go minus like the like oil and coolant lines. Um, other than that, it won't be too bad. I'm gonna start draining everything. Probably get it up on the lift. little spicy. All right, so I got the coolant drain. I'm gonna drain the oil because I might as well put new oil in with the new turbo and uh, see what else do we have to do. Uh, I just need to take off some of the line and turbo. <laughs> All right, so you can see my lines here, you know, my oil return and everything. So the banjo bolt for that is right there for that line. So it's probably gonna be easier for me to get from up top once I get the turbo out. But I'm gonna take that pipe off and then pop the line out of there. And we should be good to go. But there's a coolant line over there somewhere if I can focus on it. But that should be easy to do from the top as well. So here's a side by side of the Mamba line with AM fittings. Yeah. Looks a lot nicer. So I can actually get that coolant line now that I've got uh, all the other stuff off and get that coolant line while I'm down here. So I'm gonna undo that, undo those bolts there, and the turbo is pretty much ready to come out. All right, so I've sucked over my Ford research valve. I'm gonna replace all the vacuum hoses with some new hose. And I gotta swap over my wastegate, which 
This one's kind of old and crusty, but I'll replace that soon. Um, after that, I gotta get the broken bolt out. So sadly, that bolt or stud broke, which I'm not very happy about. All right, so thankfully a coworker of mine had smaller twist sockets than I did, and he was able to get one on there and we just used my mini torch, heat it up, and it twisted right out. Thought I was gonna have to drill it and, or do a whole bunch of other stuff. That one, the only one that's left, the threads are boogered on the end, so I'm just gonna kind of fix those up real quick. Uh, Could have swore I was gonna be driving somebody else's car home today. All right. Well, those threads are cleaned up now. All right, new turbo is in. I just gotta put the wastegate on and tighten everything up. All right, turbo is now primed. So I'm gonna finish hooking up the oil lines, coolant lines, put the intake back on and everything. And then should be time to start it. Uh, after we start it, I'm gonna let it run probably 10, 15 minutes, you know, get the air out of the coolant system, double check, you know, there's no leaks from any of these lines or AN fittings and banjo bolts and stuff. And hopefully we're done. All right, so we got everything on and ran. I had to come up with some, you know, ways to keep stuff out of the way since these lines are longer than and not molded like the factory lines are. But so far, everything's tight. I still have to put on my exhaust and my downpipe and the intercooler pipe. But now I'm gonna go through, I'm gonna go ahead and change the oil filter and uh, double check that the coolant's not gonna leak. I'm gonna pressure test it. Hopefully, Hopefully that's good. If not, just go through and tighten up all the lines. And uh, we're ready to start. Well, sadly I have a leak and it's coming from the coolant line on the turbo. So everything's tight. It looks like I put the gaskets and everything where they're supposed to be. So I'm gonna take it off and figure out why it's leaking, I guess. All right, so this is the copper washer that was on it. And I think this is why it was leaking. If you look, it's kind of deformed compared to that one. Cause this is a brand new one. But yeah, you can see like this side is deformed. There's actually a, I don't know if I can get it on the camera. You can see that little ridge there. So I'm fairly certain that's why that was leaking. Cause I just filled it back up with new washers and it seems to be okay. At this point it was pouring out of the car, so I think I'm good. Well, I'm letting it down, I believe for the last time. I had to go back through and double check a bunch of stuff because I had a couple lines leak in. These, uh, these Mamba lines have AN fittings and the nut for the steel braided line likes to sit against stuff that it shouldn't and cock the banjo bolt so you can't actually seat it fully. So that was, that was fun, plus it longer. So I had to, you know, creative with some of the routing so they didn't hit a bunch of stuff the there's a coolant line and a in the oil feed that are kind of close to the cat well i don't have a cat but the downpipe and um i'm not really a fan of how they're sitting so i'm probably not going to run these lines very long i'll probably get ones that are nicer made or maybe one piece lines instead of having an AN fitting as well. Cause this is just, it, it was it was a bit of a pain. Not to mention, I forgot to tighten the oil feed line at the block. So thank, thank God for extensions and swivels cause I was not taking all that crap back off. All right, so we got oil, we got coolant. Let's hope it starts. Or at least starts and doesn't blow up. I am a full-time mechanic, but stuff like this always, I don't know stresses me out like anytime i rebuild an engine stuff like that i just always uh always nervous about the first startup even though i know i did everything right all right let's see if i forgot anything So 
gonna let it run for about 10, 15 minutes and then uh, see how it does. I, not not a fan of the idle jumping like it is right now though. Well, it ran you know, for about five minutes now. The idle kind of evened out. The one, the coolant, which one is it? Coolant supply line, I believe. Uh, or whatever coolant lines underneath. Um, it's, it's resting right on the plant for the exhaust, so I'm not really a fan of that. So after after this gets done, I'm probably going to let it sit cool off and try and zip tie it to one of the other lines so it pulls it out of the way. But, seems to be alright. Well, it's been running about 10 15 minutes now. I'm going to let it shut it off, let it cool down, see if anything leaks after like a cold soak. And hopefully, I'll be able to drive it home today, no problem. Well, we made it home, no problem. Doesn't seem to be overheating. Boost is kicking in about where it should be. Uh, I didn't retune it. I still got the the other tune that I had in, which wasn't, it's a very conservative tune. Um, so I don't know why I said tune like that, but everything seems to be all right. Um, I'm gonna hopefully, hopefully tomorrow, when I back the car up, there won't be any surprises. Hopefully there won't be any like big puddles or nothing I didn't see any at the shop after letting it run about 15 minutes and then you know getting it up to operating temp and then letting it sit I let it sit for about an hour so didn't see anything everything looked dry cross my fingers always get like I said I always get nervous when I do stuff like this so but I mean it made the 30 minute ride home no problem I didn't really beat on it too much I'll probably wait till after this weekend um, but yeah, seems to be good.